Y'all know what time it is? It is time for the showdown. That's right. I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson. I'm here with my boys, Big Ed and Waze, like always. Always, you get it, Waze. But anyway, um, since you be the Fantasy Roundup, we are rebranding it tonight. We're going to call it the showdown because, you know, we, got, we were talking about potentially losing this losing the show because the fantasy season is over, but we still talk sports. We still want to talk some sports. So we have revamped it. We are calling it the showdown from here forward. This is episode one of the showdown, but at the same time, it's not. We want to thank you guys for joining us and supporting us. And we want to welcome you to the What Up Those Show Network presentation of the showdown. So, yo, I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson, and uh, up there in my corner, I got my homeboy beside me, Big Ed. What's happening, man? What's up? What's up, man? It was a good weekend of football. It was a good weekend of football. I'm glad we can hear you now, too. <laughs> <laughs> and down below, but not to be mistaken, we're being beneath us, is my boy, Waze. What's going on, man? Man, not much. You know, I enjoyed this weekend of football, but... I will say I was a little unhappy with the number of blowouts that happened this weekend. <laughs> really? I like blowouts. It just showed that some teams really didn't belong in the playoffs. Man. Oh, just wasn't prepared for that first day. That's mm-hmm. all. Yeah. They just weren't prepared, man. Because, you know, when you say they don't belong, then you got to replace them with somebody. And and, right. and I don't think I don't think there was anybody to replace them with. No, no. Oh, there was one team that could have easily been replaced, but I didn't want them to be replaced. Ooh, Which one was that? The Steelers. The Chargers could have easily been in that spot and put up a better yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And then the Lions could have been there instead of Arizona. <laughs> man, I'm saying it would have been the same result. <laughs> I don't know, man. The Lions would have gave them a better game. Probably. <laughs> right? Shit. <laughs> would have went down to the wire. Yeah, they would have. Gave him a better game, man. I don't know. Stafford, you know, can't beat the Lions. The was, it is about time Stafford finally got that fucking playoff win. You know what? And I'm not even giving it to him. We're going to get back to that, though. We're going to get back to that when we talk about it. I'm not giving him that playoff win. So here we go. Let's do this, y'all. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. Get this party started. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh, that crown will put you down. Ooh, no. ooh, I want you to play it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Put some respect on it. <laughs> so Joe, what we doing, man? What's All going right, on? so let's go ahead and recap uh, this past week's games. Okay. So... First up, we had, I believe it was the Raiders and the Bengals. Bengals, yes. Uh, great game, man. I, I, the Bengals look look solid. Um, the Raiders, I'm curious to see what the Raiders are going to do in the offseason from a coaching standpoint, if they're going to keep the coach. Um, I, I, I can't lie, man. I, I like... I like uh, the quarterback, man. I like Carr. I think Carr is a, is a is a good leader. He's a good quarterback, not a great quarterback, but I think he's a great leader. And I think they they followed him, man. And and Hunter Renfro has changed uh, his whole brand. He's he's become a name, uh, a household name, and uh, he, he he runs very unique. He runs his routes very uniquely. And um, hey, man, he's they they they. I, I like what they did, but the Bengals are a pretty fun team to watch. Yes. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will say this. I, I'm i already – I've been a Joe Burrow fan already. You know, that game really made me a Joe Burrow fan because he knows how to take the attention off of him and say, hey, mix and shove this ball down their throat. You know what I mean? And he, he showed some real leadership, for, especially for a young quarterback. 
most young quarterbacks don't have that kind of leadership. I think Joe Burrow's already there. Now, playing Jared at Carr, LSU. What was that? Playing at LSU helped him out a lot. Oh, yeah. Now, what I will say about Derek Carr. Yeah. Can I like, just say, not only did he play at LSU, man, he had the best college football season of all times at yeah. LSU. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Derek Carr, to me, it, I was iffy about him going into the season. I already knew he was a good quarterback, but I didn't know if that leadership was really there throughout the season. The way he put that team on his back and carried that team after all the controversy. There's no team that had more controversy surrounding it than the Oakland Ra- or the Las Vegas Raiders. And <laughs> Derek Carr, he put that team on his back. He said, hey, you follow me. I'll get you where you need to go. And that's exactly what he did. So I have a question because uh, I, do, I, I did have respect for John Gruden's ability to coach quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you think, do you think he had a lot to do with Derek uh, with, with his his development, is it Derek or David? Because I always it's Derek. Okay, so David was the one that came first. Yes. Yep, it was trash. Um, but yeah, uh, do you think he had a Gruden had a, a lot to do with with Derek's transformation or, or or growing up into this leader, or do you think he just already had it and just like most quarterbacks have a couple years of a law before they really find themselves in this league, kind of like a Kirk Cousins, so to speak. Right. I think he kind of, I, I think he had it, and John Gruden brought it out of him. Uh, John Gruden, John Gruden gave him the confidence and the edge to play with, and he took it from there. I will say, I think John Gruden definitely gave him the confidence in the uh, that edge, but I think the maturity as a man and his maturity as an uh, NFL quarterback is what really brought out that leadership in him. Okay. It, you got to uh-huh. remember a lot of these quarterbacks, they go into the offseason and they go into training camps together. You know, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady uh, are had already put out the olive branch for fucking, uh, what's his name, um, over in uh, Philly, uh, Hurt. Uh, to join them this off season to work with them and we'll do workouts with them. Um. Okay. Well, before we go too far in, in that that hole, I, and I, uh, Big Ed, what was your thoughts on the Cincinnati uh, Raiders game? Cincinnati's going to be a tough out. <laughs> They're going to be a really tough out in the AFC. I mean, they got the Chiefs left and the Bills left. Maybe the Titans might give them a run, but. I don't see anybody else. I think well, pretty much you virtually named all the teams left. I was just going to say, that's the I entire the Bengals, I think the Bengals going to be in the Super Bowl now. <laughs> We're going to get back to that because yeah. uh, we did make some, some picks. And uh, um, what, what was the other game? The second game was what? The Patriots and the Bills. <sighs> <laughs> Look, the Patriots is the reason I'm over here looking like some kind of fucking uh, like minor hunter. <laughs> no, you know what you look like? You know what you look like? Huh. You look like a million dollars. Hold on, that's what Kim told me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look, I had so much confidence in fucking Mac Jones going into that game. I was like, man, yeah. he. I wasn't expecting it to be a blowout. I was expecting Mac and the um, to run the ball, get the ball downfield in that last quarter, and fucking score a field goal. This was before the game started. By the end of the first quarter, I'm like, I picked the wrong fucking team to win this game. Because the writing was on the wall after uh, by the end of the first quarter. The Patriots weren't going to yeah, get Mac shit. Jones. As I started watching it, the first thought I had was, and I shared it with you guys actually at the time, what the fuck was I thinking? Picking a rookie quarterback on the road in his first playoff game. You know how I feel about rookie quarterbacks having their first experience mm-hmm. in anything. And I, I don't know what the fuck. I was thinking Belichick, and I didn't think about what he was working with. I, my mind, my head was all Belichick when my head should have said, you got a rookie quarterback 
going on the road in his first playoff, first ever playoff game, he's going to suck eggs. And I didn't. I thought Belichick would just figure that team out, and that's all I thought about. And and as soon as they, as soon as they started playing, I was like, "That's right, he's a fucking rookie." What the fuck was I thinking? Mm-hmm. And 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 aside from that, Josh Allen played a perfect game, pretty much. He played a literal perfect game. I cannot tell you one flaw in his game. Uh, from this past weekend, it, it was if he plays like that, they're winning the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that he can do that every well, week. With the but, exception of taking a, a knee, every single drive he got, a, they scored a touchdown. Dude, I mean, it was if if they if I don't think they he got it in him. I don't think anybody has it in him to play that fucking well every game, every week. But if he does, they went there. They nobody can beat them. Not even Debo. I take oh, that back. Debo. Uh, I'm like, hold up, wait. Hold on now. <laughs> Debo's been doing some dangerous shit to everybody. Okay. <laughs> uh Big Ed, you got any thoughts on that game, real quick? Ah, uh, I just I, I just guess Belichick ain't the master everybody thought he was. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. I think this was a good season for them, a great season for them, actually. Um, if you had a rookie quarterback in the fucking first in his first playoff game, and they was on a roll, and not only a hostile environment, but a hostile uh, climate as well. I mean, I, I, I'm not putting that on. I'm not putting that on Belichick's legacy and saying he's not what I thought he was because of that. I'm not doing it. That was a that was a you know that was a tough that was a tall task yeah um but fucking with with nobody's good enough to beat what Josh Allen did if Josh yeah. Allen can do that there's not a coach if John Don Shula can't beat him nobody <laughs> no it it was impossible it's, um, he played the perfect fucking game exactly he was incredible he was fucking incredible twenty one to twenty five. For 308. Four incomplete passes. Man. And the high winds and negative six degrees. Come on, man. How he do you do that? Just put out him. Well, he took How his belt off and said, come here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> man, that is impossible to beat, man. That's a that was incredible, man. Incredible performance. Um I, okay, so that one that one was a blowout. That was a mm-hmm. blowout. It wasn't even close. There's not a whole lot to say. Um, this one was also a blowout, though. Oh man, look, Eagles and, Eagles and Buccaneers. <laughs> Eagles weren't ready, and Jalen Hurts. You had Jalen Hurts playing his first playoff game against the guy who's played more playoff games than anybody in the history of the league. Yeah, yeah, and it isn't done yet. Yeah, it ain't done. <laughs> man, look. Seen an article earlier that, that said that Tom Brady makes the Buccaneers the most dangerous team in the playoffs. Yeah, especially since he's got Gronk. Tom Brady is the most dangerous team in the playoffs. I mean, he's period. He's uh, by himself the most dangerous team in the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, you, you, that's every year, so he can you know you never know with him. Yeah, there's not much to be said about that game. It's just it was Tom Brady against fucking Jalen Hurts. What did you expect to happen? I was wrong. I chose the Eagles to win that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. It's a playoff game. Look, man, I I, I was just like, I, I just want to see Tom Brady lose. <laughs> Brady has never lost in the first round of the playoffs. Ever. I was hoping it was going to happen. <laughs> 49ers Cowboys. <laughs> that was actually a, a, a really good game. I think the best game of the day. Yeah. Easily. The, the, I think easy. the Bengals Raiders was a damn good game, too. Yeah. Bengals uh, and Raiders, I think, was the best game of the week. I think I think the 49ers Cowboys was. No. I think the 49ers Cowboys was. I mean, it came down to 
Them just needing Thank one you. more play. Yep. They they needed one more freaking play. Oh. And, and and it would have been interesting to see what would have happened. And you know what I'm saying? If the game would have ended on them having that one last play, there would have been a lot more satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the fact that they were unable to get that last playoff made it so anticlimactic. Uh, even for me, even for me, I mean, it was it was a uh, partial sigh of relief. But at the same time, I was I was I was looking for the last play. I wanted to pick this motherfucker off on the last play of the game and call it. I'm, that's what I wanted. I wanted you to think you were about to throw it in the end zone and get that touchdown. We knock it down or pick it off and be, and be up out of this bitch. Right. And instead, you just fucking ran out of time because instead of giving the ball to the ref, you gave the ball to your center. He said, y'all, y'all lined up and the ref coming through like, get the fuck out the way. I got to do this. Right. <laughs> I Look. spot the ball, dumbass, not him. And uh, they ran out of time, man. The only reason I give the Bengals game an edge is one major statistical fact about that uh, 49ers-Cowboys game. The Cowboys had 14-plus. I stopped counting after 14. 14-plus 14 penalties, including numerous encroachment uh, calls. That game would have been a lot better and a lot uh, more exciting had the Cowboys stayed disciplined. What isn't that a Mike Mike McCarthy trait? His teams are kind of undisciplined a little bit, and he's not good at clock management. Mm, I can't really say that because last place I remember him at was Green Bay. Yeah, and, and why is he not there no more? Because instead of Aaron Rodgers running in a touchdown, he had to throw a touchdown and missed it. Is that on Aaron Rodgers? No, it's on the play caller. It's It's on the coach who calls the plays. It's a time management issue. That's on the coach. That's not on the player. Time management is on the coach. I I can, can, with 100% certainty, say Mike McCarthy did not tell Dak Prescott run a quarterback draw up the middle and then try to spike the ball. (laughs) You know, that Mike McCarthy makes mistakes, but he's not an absolute moron. It takes an absolute moron of a coach to make that call. Or a veteran quarterback who decided, I'm going to have a rookie mistake too late in my fucking career. I don't know. I. I, I Dak, like, paused like he was about to pull up about five yards short of where he ended up, and but he saw more field. So he he was about to stop and slide, and he decided to go ahead and take that extra five yards. If he would have stopped and slid where he was, he would have been better. They, they would have had opportunity to, to spike that ball. Exactly. Um, 25 yards, 30 yards, you're still you're still in good position to get that ball to the end zone. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's just about decision making. On that at that point, it's all on the guys on the field. Uh, Mike McCarthy could have been in his ear, but he can't be in his ear long enough for them to get that playoff. So, so the, the, okay, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, within the what 30 seconds that they had to get downfield as far as they did, there's no way Mike McCarthy was making those calls. He he gave well, Dak Prescott the reins. And part of that was was the 49ers not protecting those sidelines. Oh, my God, yeah. They should have protected the sidelines earlier. And then when they did protect the sidelines, that's when Dak saw the wide open field in the middle and took off running. So um, that said, we know what happened. They ran out of time. The 49ers moved on. But my question is this. Um, in the aftermath of the game, uh, fans were throwing shit at the refs on their way out uh, off the field. And Dak, I don't know if you heard this, but Dak supported the fans for throwing shit at the refs. If they feel like we do, his exact quote, if they feel like we do, I don't blame them. 
I'm, here's pretty much what else are you supposed to say when you're guaranteed to be that the quarterback for that team and for that city for a number of years to come? Are you going to say something, denounce those uh, uh, fans, and have them pissed off at you wanting you to be fired? God damn right. Of- you, you, yeah, you, right. You, 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 yeah, do. you do. Yes, you do. You tell them we, we, we better than that. Now, now here you the- make fans understand we better than that. It ain't on the refs. It's on us. I did a quarterback draw. I ran five yards too far. I let the time run out on us. That was on me. And and we can't we better than that. We we gotta be bigger than this and we can't throw shit at the refs. You, you be big bigger than that. Yes, you do. Yeah. That's your responsibility as the face of this organization and the guaranteed man on this team. Yes, you 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 make sure those fans know that it wasn't cool. Because it was I'm gonna give an argument on that. Yes, the average team can easily sit there and tell their fans we're better than that. But this is the Dallas Cowboys fans we're talking about. Who have fuck. not had the ability to be better than that the entire team that team has been, or time that team's been there. The, there's three teams that has the most toxic fan base. Dallas, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh. I don't agree. Oh. No. no. We, 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 Green we, Bay is really toxic. And the Raiders, too. And, <laughs> uh but no, not not when it comes to throwing shit at the refs. No, that wasn't that wasn't cool. And and it wasn't on the refs. It was on you. Yeah, you gotta own that shit. Yeah. You you want to be a leader. You want to be the man. And you the face of this franchise. Own that shit, dude. You don't put that shit on the refs and then tell people to, to throw shit at the refs. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. You, you own the bad that. times. You own the bad times just as well as the good ones. Yeah, no, that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't the way to go with that no. to me. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to, you know, back him up on what he's saying. I don't agree with it. I just look at the perspective of he's a quarterback for one of the fan bases that is one of the more toxic when it comes to NFL on football. This is the same fan base that no matter. Which is why you don't support the bottom, the bottom of the culture. You Mm -hmm. don't support the bottom of the culture. Mm Mm-hmm. You you take the high road and you take the high because guess what? You got to get on the field with a lot of these same refs again next year. Yep. And you want your fans to throw shit at me? All right, <laughs> motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Hold, yeah. Go ahead and take this hit to the head real quick. Holding against you. Mm. I'm sitting here thinking. Roughing the pat. Oh, that was the pat. Never mind. No foul on the play. <laughs> I, so, since we're on the topic of controversy in the NFL this past weekend, we, I'm surprised we didn't touch on this. How do you guys feel about the Bengals getting that uh, whistle and still getting the touchdown? I thought that was bullshit too. Yeah, yeah. that was complete bullshit. Yeah, that was that was bullshit too. Um, and they didn't throw shit. They didn't condone throwing shit at them. Uh, no. Okay, um, Chiefs beat the Steelers. Like they stole something. Mm. They I, saw a funny meme. I, was, I, I, I saw a funny meme. Somebody posted a white Steelers helmet, and it says, when somebody beats the black off you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's fucked <laughs> up. Yeah, it's just, man, I'm, I'm sad Ben got to go out with that L. Yeah, at least like that. I... I guess we can't really say we're surprised he went out with an L. No, because they weren't really that bad of an L. You know, I would have been okay if he got a, a lowercase L, but that's a capital L. That's caps lock L. <laughs> you know, that was... <laughs> yeah. But, at, at, man, I don't know. I had hope for him. But now we know in the year 2022... It is not okay to go out there and just have fun. You need to actually go and try to win. You know, I, I, I think they, I think it's okay to go out and just have fun. They just weren't good enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Kansas City was just far superior to the Steelers. Steelers was one of them teams that kind of snuck in the playoffs. And uh, kudos to Mike Tomlin for for never having a losing season and finding a way to get them in the playoffs this year. But, um. 
quite frankly, you said it. They were one of them teams that didn't belong. Yep. The Eagles. And we'll talk about a team that did belong, but another quarterback that just wasn't ready for no. the big stage. Uh, the Rams and Cardinals. Yeah. That would... <laughs> That was an embarrassment right there for the Cardinals. You get JJ Watt back and you can't stop nobody for shit. Man. Bad day. Man, it was it was five minutes left in the first half. Just, just over five minutes left in the first half when Arizona got their first first down. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a Bears offense. That is why I don't give this to Stafford. That's called a dominating defensive performance. I could agree with that. Yeah. And a third of their points came from the defense as well, from a pick six. Oh, my uh, God, that pick six. So that, was, that was an incredible. The shortest pick six of all times happened, and it was very – irresponsible of, of Kyla to do it. Kyla had a horrible game, horrible night, mm -hmm. um, horrible showing in his first playoff game. And that defense was smothering. But you look at, I mean, you're talking of you, you, Aaron Donald. So there you got the dominating defensive lineman that makes everybody else better. Von Miller, a dominating linebacker, makes everybody in that middle better. And Jalen Ramsey, every, a, a dominating defensive back that makes everybody in the defensive back back uh, field uh, down, uh, better. And I just I give that I give that playoff win. The defense gave Stafford a playoff win, in my opinion. I can agree with that. In it's my first, opinion, that's what happened. It's the first time in his career he's had a defense to work with. Let's uh, let's face it, man. Have you, Stafford. Stafford threw for less yards, the fewer yards than than Roethlisberger. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how'd that work out for Roethlisberger, who threw for more yards than Stafford? What does that tell you? Right. That tells me that his defense shut the other team down, and that's why his his performance was good enough to win. They didn't have to do nothing. They ran the ball forty some times. I mean, come on, what, what did he have to do, really? Throw, yeah. throw cheap throw passes. Great. Congratulations, motherfucker. Yeah, Stafford was 13 to 17 for 202 yards. Damn. 202 yards. All you do is 17 passes. Great. Fantastic. I motherfucker, I believe I've seen him throw that in the first quarter. Man. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what, so yeah, right. I, it wasn't it wasn't a typical Stafford game. It wasn't Stafford carrying them on his back. It wasn't Stafford doing anything significant to win that game. I thought he had an average quarterback game. I thought it was a mediocre performance on his behalf. All he had to do was not throw it away, and he didn't. And it was easy not to because they were on their heels all night because you ran it down their fucking throat. They had to bite on a, on a play fake because you ran the ball more than half of your plays. That's right. The defense was killing you. The defense was – they had – it was just over five minutes left in the first half before they even got a first down, bro. Man. Think about that. <laughs> How can you lose that game? <laughs> right. Right. No. So they Mike went in 21 nothing at, at, at halftime and seven points were scored by the defense. When it comes to that game specifically, there's only one thing I can actually remember from that game. Mind you, I was absolutely sober during the entirety of that game. The only thing I can remember is the Buda Baker injury. Other than that, it wasn't really a memorable game. I, I tend to agree with you. Um, so that was the weekend, man. That was the uh, yeah, games for the weekend. And um, Joe, while ways, while we figure out what you're going to have us talk about next, we're going to take a short one.
And we're back. Yes. We're back to uh, the showdown. Now, uh, I, uh, OG Tim Wilson, I'm here with uh, Big Ed and Waze. And uh, Waze, what are we talking about next? All right, so before we jump into uh, making our predictions for the conference championship games and for the well, for the conference championship games, uh, let's go over our picks from last week. All righty, then. Let's do that. So, um, we had the Bengals Raiders. Uh, Big Ed picked the Raiders, and the Bengals won. The Bills beat the Patriots. We all picked the Patriots because we're all fucking goofballs. Uh, the Bucks slaughtered the Eagles, and Joe picked the Eagles. 49ers embarrassed the Cowboys, and Big Ed picked the Cowboys. The Chiefs beat the Steelers, and I picked the Chiefs. The Rams picked the Cardinals, and Joe picked the Cardinals. So on the week, I went five and one. Joe went two and four. Ooh. And Big Ed went two and four. Damn. <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty bad for you guys. Definitely not one of my brightest moments. No. <laughs> and and to think, the one game that I did lose, I was sitting there watching in the first quarter going, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> right, so. <clears throat> Next up, uh, you know, I said we're going to reselect our conference championship, but to do so, we'd actually have to go over and select who's going to win this next week of uh, games in the divisional round to make it to the conference championships. So why don't we go ahead and jump right into that? All right. Sounds fair because y'all got Y'all the ones got to repick because y'all. Both of y'all picked the Steelers to go to the Super Bowl. So y'all all fucked up. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> uh, first up, we got the Bengals going to Tennessee to meet the Titans. Oh. I'm riding. I'll go first. I'm I'm riding the Bengals. Hmm. Okay. okay. So this one is tough for me, and I'm going to tell you why. I love what I saw of the Bengals this week. But I did pick the Titans to be there. Actually, this is what I picked. Yep. I didn't know that they were playing in this round. I picked the, the Bengals and the Titans to be in the AFC Championship game. Yep. But the matchups are they 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 reseed them. So uh, the matchups of the bracket is not just cut and dry. These two, the winner of this one beats plays them. So this is actually what I predicted to be my AFC championship game. And I'm going to go. And I said my Super Bowl pick was 49ers Titans. Yes. You sticking with that? Which means I'm going with the Titans. All right. So. Even though I like the Bengals. The Bengals are high. High velocity uh, offense, plain and simple. I call their defense more mediocre, but that offense is incredible. But because the defense is not as high caliber as they would need to be, I'm going to pick the Titans because the King is back this week. King Henry will be killing the Bengals defense. I'm going to go with the Titans. You know, you can rush for 300 yards in a game and still lose, right? Yeah. So that's why I'm sticking with the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Their offense is too high powered to play a team that that's running centered. I don't know, because they weren't very running centered without Derrick Henry. And you see where they got. AFC was kind of weak this year, though. What? To me, it was. To me, it was. Look at the team that didn't make the playoffs. San Diego. I mean, uh, well, San Diego. Yes, San Diego. Dropped the mic on San Diego. Um, <laughs> you got the, the Ravens, the Chargers, 
Look at the team that did the. I mean, these are good teams that didn't make the playoffs in the AFC. AFC was strong. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think the AFC was strong. The Broncos didn't make the playoffs. There's some good teams that didn't make the playoffs in the AFC. And when you go to the NFC, you got the Eagles. Who are basically the Dolphins of the NFC. They shouldn't have been there. But when you think about it, who in the NFC will replace them? But we didn't have enough. It's trash after that. Yeah. Everybody else is trash. Everybody you can replace them with was trash. So I, I think the AFC was actually pretty tough. Um, I think the NFC is kind of top heavy, but overall, I think the AFC was pretty tough. Yeah. Um, that said, what's the next game? Ah, uh, we got the 49ers going to Green Bay to meet the Packers. Nigga, please. <laughs> <laughs> he already wrote his pick down without saying it. We already know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you know what? I'll go next on this. Um to me, this is tougher because you got Aaron Rodgers, you got Devontae Adams, you got was it Aaron Jones, and you got and you his got backup. Debo. And you got Debo. You got do yeah, you got his back. All I need is all I need is Debo. But, but yeah, Packers like you are said, getting, Packers are getting Jair Alexander back. Mm-hmm. And then oh. on the other side, you got Debo. You got porn star <laughs> Jimmy G. <laughs> porn star Jimmy G. <laughs> then you got Ayuk. You got Kittle. Oh, man. That's tough because Debo is a quadruple threat now. No, triple threat. He can run the ball. He can pass the ball. And he can catch the ball. Don't pick Jimmy G off because he might knock your ass out. He, he probably can tackle. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> he go hit you with that porn star stash. Or, yeah. Uh, I'm going to hit you with. Uh, God, I, I really don't want to pick against the Packers, though. Because that's a strong ass team, but. I have a feeling the 49ers are going to surprise them. I'm going to go with the 49ers. I think I think Joe is coming around, man. I think Joe is coming around. As much as I hate to do it, I'm picking the Packers still. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has just proved to be too much for a lot of people lately. Not for the 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he gets his, his left tackle back. Bakhtiari is back, too. <sighs> We will see <laughs> what we got next, then, bro. We will see. We will see. After that, we got the L.A. Rams. We'll see. We will see. Going down to Tampa Bay to meet Tom Terrific in the Tampa Bay. But in let me say this right: the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going with the Bucks, baby. Fuck. One thing I learned a long time ago is you never pick against Tom Brady. So, you're so t- I'm going with the Bucks. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> but Matthew Stafford is going to win. And I'm not talking about the Rams defense. Matthew Stafford is going to win because he finally has his chance to up show, out show one of and you know what? The best quarterback in the league. I'm going to go with the Rams. Okay. Up next, we got the Buffalo Bills going down to Kansas City to get some ribs and meet the Chiefs. All right. I'm 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 going first on this one. I'm going with the Bills. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn, he just like jumped in there on me, but I'm going the Bills as well. Shit. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and make that one unanimous. We're all going with the Bills. That's right, amazing that the team, team that's gone to the Super Bowl for the last two years, none of us are picking. That makes me want to change my pick. They've had too many the problems last, this year. But the last time we all picked one team, it was the Patriots. Look, <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. 
<laughs> All right, now, now that that's out the way, we're not even going to discuss who's going to go because we already made our picks on who's going to go into the conference. We're not going to discuss who's going to win that. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this year? Forty Niners for uh, OG. <laughs> Big Ed. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my original pick and go with the Packers. Okay. That conference championship game is gonna be a hell of a game, though. Yeah, between the Forty Nine ers and Bucks, I'm telling you, Jimmy, <laughs> it's gonna be hell of. <laughs> All right. I think Matthew Stafford's going to finally get his first ring. Hell no. 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 No, no. Let him pick it. Let him pick it. He already picked the Steelers. Oh, I already picked the Rams. I already got that in there. And I'm solidifying that. And now, if your pick gets eliminated next week, you're just eliminated. You get to make one final choice once the final, the Super Bowl game is picked. Man, no, no, no. As y'all keep as y'all keep getting it wrong, <laughs> y'all can keep on repicking. Okay. <laughs> there ain't no problem. Because the Packers and the Rams losing this week. <laughs> well, I already know the Rams is losing. It's like, like the Steelers. <laughs> it's like the Steelers did. Y'all both of y'all team lost last week. Both of y'all teams gonna lose again this week. So okay. we're going to let, I'm just going to, so, so since I'm the, the uncommon denominator, I'm going to make the rule. Y'all can keep on picking. <laughs> and y'all can jump on board, jump on the bandwagon, keep on picking. Nah, that's not a bandwagon. I'm jumping on. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, dude. All right. All right, all right. So, all right. So that does it for tonight's show. That that, that does it for the uh, the showdown. That's all. That's, that's it. all we got. Man, I want more. But I guess that's all we got. Man, I want more. There's nothing else to talk about. Uh, the Raiders <sighs> fired their GM. Mike Mayock. Yep. Yeah, uh, I wonder why. Uh, yeah, I wonder why. Um, for <laughs> a lot of controversy up there. And uh, Las Vegas. He let go of Khalil Mack. And he hired John Gruden. <laughs> well, that's it for the showdown, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed the first episode of the showdown. It is the Roundup Revamped. Right? So I want to thank y'all for joining us for the showdown. I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson. As on behalf of Big Ed and Waze and the What Up Goes Show Radio Network, we want to thank you all for joining us. Catch us again next week. Right here, same bad time, same bad channel, same bad station. Subscribe. Be surprised what you get on the other side. Peace. Just need to clear my mind.